Okay, our last six last Academy Awards, boy. So <laughs> literally a week from now, we're gonna be. Um, well, I think it's the ninety second. I think it is the the Academy Awards um, ceremony, right? So, in true tradition, though, we just want to just run through all the categories and who we think will win in each category, right? Uh, in my case, I would have at least a runner up. Well, uh, that well, not all of them will have a runner up, right? Uh, but yeah, we just kind of run through who we think will win, runner ups, and you know who we actually predict might actually win, you know what I mean, the grand scheme of things, you know what I mean, if the politics play all the way they do, you know what I mean, that kind of stuff there. So, right. uh, well, you, you have your, right, so you have your picks ready, or you just have to hear them by name, and then you'll just yeah, I just want to hear them, and then, I, I ain't thinking about these things right now, so, yeah, just tell me now. <laughs> well, that's fine, I mean, I know you have your things to do, <laughs> but... I just, I just kind of didn't think that's a priority. Yeah, just, I didn't think about it. Okay, okay, fine. All right, so we'll start off with, uh, well, you know, well, what are the best categories, in my opinion? Best visual effects, right? So we have Avengers Endgame, we have The Irishman, we have 1917, we have The Lion King, pss, and we have Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker, double pss, pss. So my pick for visual effects is 1917. Right, me too. Just, yeah, just simply because of how they sold the long take, and I still haven't watched the behind the scenes yet, and the watch should. But I still, I just free that it will just kind of, it will, like the illusion will just disappear. You know, when I watch it again, you know, I'll be like, okay, I know, I know what, what happened here. I know, I know where they fake that, blah, 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 right? But just how they were able to pull it off and just knowing that there was some VFX involved in it is still my blue, in my opinion. Uh, as far as runner up goes, my pick is the Irishman, just because of the de aging software that they use on, well, the, right. well, the main characters there. Um, started off a little hit or miss, a little spotty, but eventually, as the story got along, you just got so you see characters. It's almost like you swear they didn't even have that that de aging software applied to their faces, right? But yeah, I thought that they did a great job. Um, of course, CC actually pulling this off. I, I don't. I think this is like probably the first time he actually used that. There, but being able to use that with these great actors, yeah, that's that's admirable in my opinion. I would pick a game, but that's a little too easy. If it wins, great, I'll be happy. But right. Bud Lion King uh, <laughs> um, and Star Wars. That 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 those two are going to win. If Lion King does win, though, I will I will I will throw myself a little hissy fit. So um, yeah, what, 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 um, what's your I mean, I, I, like, Yeah, Lion King could win. I ain't changing nowhere, but yeah, I want to win. Yeah. So what about uh, but as as your pick itself, who you think will win? Like seventeen or what? No, yeah. As I said, I agree with you. Nineteen seventeen. All right. Cool. Cool. Uh, okay, next off we have costume design. We have the Irishman, we have Jojo Rabbit, well deserved. We have Joker, well deserved. Uh, Little Women, and we have Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So my pick is Little Women, uh, mainly because it's a period piece and yeah, you have a lot of dresses involved. But I, I did dig the, the costume design, though. I really, really dug the costume design, um, and it just worked. I mean, let's see that. I, I, I don't know, it just. The best way to see it is that, yeah, period pieces or films based on a certain time period are almost like shoe wins the, to win in this category. But uh, as far as runner up goes, I would say Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, just how they got the late, you know, the 60s clothes down, you know, in 30. I thought they did that very well. Uh, what about you? What do you, what do you think with, with costume design? Uh, yeah, roughly the same as well. I, again, nothing to think about that. Yeah, Little Women as well. Like, I can't really see anything. Uh, beating that it's like yeah that's what it is i mean they, once you replicate the time period you're good right so next off we have well a category i generally don't care about this is makeup and hair uh we have bombshell joker judy malficent mistress of evil and 1917 so my right. pick is bombshell right mainly because oh. of what they did with uh well mcgill you know charlie Stern, right making her look Almost, I would say, like, you know, Megan Kelly, right? Who she played in the film. Right. Uh, as a whole, I mean, the show is pretty decent. Um, not the best show I've ever seen but in, in the world, but I mean, the performances uh, were, were solid. I mean, not just from Charlie Seren, but also Margot Robbie, who I'll talk about later. Nicole Kidman, who did get nominated. Um, very feminist, by the way, because, you know, it's all about, you know, 
you know, very, very me too, though, because all about anti Roger Alice and if you remember the stuff that he got accused with, you know, with the Fox News, all that stuff. Yeah, it's it's very on the news about that. But still, that's solid film, though. But just the makeup that he did for, for her herself, making her look like that, uh, look like Megan. Actually, actually, I, I was so bad to be, to be honest. Right. Uh, as far as run up, it's kind of obvious. Joker. Okay. Just, yeah, just like what he did to Joaquin Phoenix, his, you know, adding to his physical transformation. I thought that was great. Though. You know, we need the ruffle hair, you know, we need the almost kind of haggard piece that he has. Yeah. And then it goes even deeper, even before he even puts on the, the um, you know, the, the face paint and all that kind of stuff. Well, yes, the face paint stuff also works as well. But I, I just look at that the before, really, not so much the after, right? But yeah, that's my run up. Uh, what about you? Yeah, my winner is Joker and run up is Maleficent. I saw Maleficent right. too. Um, yeah, it's like, yeah, they nail all of that costume and, and, and makeup and whatever. So, like, cool. All right. It, 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 was that show actually good to uh, Maleficent? Kind of, right? I, was, um, I never saw the first one, so I didn't bother to check this new one out there. No, this one, this one, real silly and terrible. But, no, the, um, but he, from a you know, production, that standpoint, is like, yeah. All right. Cool, cool. Nice. All right. Okay. Uh, best original song, and I'll confess something here. I only listened to four of these songs literally today, the time it's recorded, right? One of which actually familiar with already that's the song from Story Story 4, which Randy Newman right. did, which is I Can't Let I Can't Let You Throw Yourself Away, which in retrospect is a decent song, but that's number pick though. But yeah, that's one of the nominees, along with uh, Rocket Man. Well, sorry, the song from Rocket Man performed by Elton John and Taron right. Edgerton. I'm gonna love me again. We have uh, I forgot the, the woman's name for this movie Breakthrough. I'm starting with you. We have a song from Frozen Two, Into the Unknown, and we have a song from Harriet called Stand Up. So my pick is I'm gonna love me again for Rocket Man. That's such yeah, a catchy too. as hell song. It is so vibrant. It's so lively. It's so it's so happy though. Like you, you listen, it's just such a feel good song though. While every all the other songs were kind of dramatic, basically. But yeah, this one was just so lean back and fun. And my runner up is Harriet, uh, stand up. I uh, forgot the, the actress name, Cynthia something. But yeah, her, her rendition of this song, though, is so, so incredibly powerful. And in the music video, that they actually have like a lyric video and a, like the actual video. Uh, she, she, she tear up there in the engine. That's to show how, how passionate she was about that song. But yeah, my pick is still Rocket Man. I'm gonna love me again. So, what's your pick for best original song? Uh, yeah, um, Rocket Man number one. Um, I think that's about it. I don't think anything else on that list. Um, it's kind of bullshit that Taron Edgerton didn't get through, but Rami Malek get through with heating. I was like, come on, man. You know, actually, like, yeah, rap. yes. Anyway, uh, best original score we have Star Wars: The Rise of Skywalker. We have 1917. You have Marriage right. Story, we have Little Women, right. and we have my pick, Joker. Uh, right. Still can't pronounce that woman's surname, but I love the score for this. I remember listening to this a day after watching the movie. It was as haunting as what I saw, what I saw it utilized on, you know, in the film itself. You know, we the, the the strings are just so dark though, and there's the drums and everything like that. It just gets deep into your psyche, you know, and it just kind of freaks you out from within. Um, my runner up is my boy Thomas Newman for 1917. I thought that the score right. for that was great. It fit that film, you know, near perfectly in my opinion. But yeah, my pick is Joker, but just for how unnerving that 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 score was. So, uh, what's your pick? Yeah, Joker as well. And um, was the other one on the list again? Just the uh, 1917, Marriage Story, Little Marriage Woman. Story. And, okay. Oh, yeah. Marriage yeah, Story. Yeah, yeah, yeah the Marriage score for that was Story. great, though. Whimsical, yeah, yeah. but also melancholy. I, I love that. I love that. Yeah. All right. So, best production design. Interesting. Uh, we have The Irish One. We have Jojo Rabbit, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Parasite. So, right. in the. Uh, in my magical dream world where anything is possible, I could see Parasite within this. Because, right. yeah, the interiors of, oh gosh, I forget the house, yeah. probably the house, masterful in my opinion. But if it were up to me, my pick will be Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Just in okay. terms of just the design of, well, Ellie, I mean, Hollywood in 1969, yeah. I thought was, was near perfect, was Flawless, I should say, in my opinion. It just literally took you into that year, into that time period. Um, 
runner up kind of obvious uh the irish one because it's also a period piece as well you know it just took you back to the 60s and you know what i mean but it's just eventually how the years you know uh progress now yeah and you just see how the interiors and exteriors you know change and whatnot but yeah my pick is once upon a time in hollywood but like i say my dream will i would i would be rooted for paris I would, i'll be happy if paris i'd win for that uh can they really put a lot of care and attention into that i'll give them that so uh, what's your what's your pick for production design? Yeah, number one, number one, number one, 1917, and uh, number two, um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. All right, nice, nice, nice. Okay, so now for the the controversial sound <laughs> sound mixing um, and sound editor, right? So we start with sound mixing. Uh, we have Ad Astra, we had Ford v Ferrari, Joker 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. My pick is 1917. My runner-up is the Ford v Ferrari, right? For obvious reasons. Uh, for sound editing, we have Ford v Ferrari, Joker, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Star Wars: The Rise of Skywalker. My pick is once again 1917. But as far as sound editing goes, I'll give it to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Um, and when we say okay. sound editing, we mean in terms of just the 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 various sounds that you hear in the show, right? Um, Mixing, of course, is just putting them together and where they come in and where they, you know, where they come in into the story, into the film. But yeah, I, I thought in terms of like the period piece uh, aspect of it, um, you know, what I mean, in terms of like the the, the songs that you hear in the in the, you know, in the movie, uh, you know, the radio static, you know, we just putting it in the car, you know, we those scenes with Brad Pitt and just sonically you know, just taking it into that time period, you know, what I mean. So right. that's why you know, well, that that's more runner, but still. I mean, the seventies are war film jet, so so come on. I mean, it's war, right? So yeah, as far yeah. as sound editing and mixing goes, the seventies is my pick. Uh, what about you? What's your pick for yeah, editing and mixing? as well. All right, cool, cool, cool. Uh, film edited. Ah, wait, well, this is a tricky one. We have Ford v Ferrari. We have the right. Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, and Parasite. Ooh. So my right. pick, I to go with Thelma Shoemaker, Irishman, by. She okay. is a veteran in this thing. Um, she she came through, killed it. The transition from scene to scene, from scene to scene, sorry, how effortless it felt, you know what I mean? And it just kept here engaged through the three and a half run to hour run time of this movie. Yeah? And that's another thing to take into consideration, how long the film was and how it just still kept you engaged. Runner up, ironic, <laughs> weirdly enough, I would say Parasite. Um, because okay. yeah, I, I do love like that montage scene, for example, where they were trying to get the, the maid out and they was trying to, you know, try to, um, uh, what was it? it was peaches that she was allergic to, and just how they edit that there so tightly and the music that they use there. I thought it was, was perfect in my opinion, just in terms of just building that that great scheme there. I have some other great, you know, editing, you know, this trolley film there, there's a lot of great editing, uh, in that film. But yeah, uh, for me, my pick is the Irishman. Runner up is Parasite. Uh, what about yeah. you? What's your what's your? Uh, well, you can also uh, have runner up too. Well, you're yeah, number one. And I, two, just, so. I just kind of mad. I just kind of mad at Uncut Gems and get nominated for this. However, um, I'll say mm, Parasite number one. Then then um, Ford v Ferrari. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll be Ford v Ferrari. He had some some excellent editors as well, right? Especially with those, uh, especially with the recent scenes, right? Uh, okay, now we have Best International Film Feature. Sorry, Best International Feature Film. We have Corpus Christi. We have Honeyland. We have Lee Miserables. We have Pete and Glory. And we have my pick, Parasite. Of course, it's going to win. No question. It is going to win. Best International Feature Film. Sorry, sorry. It is going to win. It is the best foreign language film of the year. Hands on, right? But if I have a runner up, it would be Honeyland, which I actually saw today as I was recorded. And it right. actually is, uh, well, it's a Macedonian film, actually. And it actually is, like, surprisingly really good, though. And what it's just about, it's about this elderly woman. She's a beekeeper. She lives in this village in North Ma- uh, Macedonia. And it's just, like, this cinema verity, like, exploration of her life. Um, she takes care of her, her mother, who is dying. Uh, also... Yeah, they have this subplot involving these this this family who moves next door to her and they like try to take the bees, well try to claim the bees for themselves because it's all about making money and all that kind of stuff that they have cattle and 
it's just that kind of clash between the two of them. Though. But it's just really about her and just her life, basically. And sometimes you don't see really in movies, right? It's just quite a fascinating film. It's also nominated for Best Foreign, uh, well, sorry, for Best Documentary, which makes sense because, yes, while it is a documentary, it does tell a simple but very effective and very, very well told, well, very. I don't want to say well too, okay? It implies it was right involved. But yeah, very fascinating story here, man. So yeah, so Parasite is going to win for sure. But you know what I mean? As I run it up, I would say Honeyland. Uh, what's your pick for best international feature film? Well, I only saw one, and that was Parasite. <laughs> Sorry to say that. I didn't have time to see anything else. Right, uh, right. Parasite. Oh yeah, and I, I really wanted to see Peter Glory. I really wanted to. But I don't know, just, just time, man. Just didn't get around to it. Uh, we'll Is skip... Peter Glory? That, that's Peter yet. Glory. Well, right. That's why see Peter Glory is, is is there. Okay. Well, I got uh, like a uh, not Peter. Sorry about that. Okay. That, well, well, like, well, that, well, that, well that, that's fine. Run up Peter Glory. All right. Cool. Cool. Uh, we'll forego best live action and best documentary short subject films yeah. because we just haven't seen them, right? Uh, best documentary feature. Uh <laughs> we have well Honeyland. We have Four Summer. The Edge of Democracy, The Cave, and American Factory. My yeah. pick, don't get mad at me, is Honeyland. I, I really think that this right. was a very well-made documentary. But runner up, I would have to give it to your... I have a feeling this is going to be your pick, American Factory. Okay, yeah. Right. <laughs> Just a really well-crafted doc. You know what I mean? It's talking about, well, you know, Chinese workers and, you know, their... Their ideology when it comes to work compared to Americans and you know me that kind of stuff that can they work together in this one factory? You know me very 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 profound film. Um, I have a feeling that will win because just just off the mere fact that um, the Obama's executive producer show. See, so yeah, I have a feeling that this is going to this is going to be a shoe in to win best documentary feature. But for me, I still think that Honeyland is great, so I'll be rooting right. for Honeyland. But I'll be happy if American Factory wins. Uh, yeah, what was what's your pick? Yeah, yeah, American Factory is my number one. Um, I have to see something, something else you mentioned. Uh, we have Four Summer, we have The Edge of the Democracy, which I know was Edge on Demo- uh, Netflix, but I'm, I watched Edge it. Of, I, saw, I saw Edge of Democracy, so yeah, that guy my number two. All right, how was The Edge of Democracy? Was it great or was it meh? Good, pretty good, actually. I like All it right. how it was. It's about uh, something with Brazil, right? I think it's about... Well, it's, it's that, but it have a more broader trend of you know, fashion shenanigans across the planet. But yeah, Brazil is like the root of this. Okay, okay. Uh, one of my favorite categories is up next. Best Cinematography. We have The Irishman, Joker, The Lighthouse, 1917, and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Now, as much as I love the visuals for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Joker, and Irishman, my pick is Roger Deacon's The G.O.D. of Cinematography for, uh, for 1917. I thought yep. that he knocked it out the park with this movie. It looks gorgeous. I mean, even for she was grim as it as you know as it was the uh, runner up, Light Some right. of the best black and white cinematography I've seen in a movie, yep. like ever in my opinion, Dread. I I'm so glad that this movie got nominated for for that. I thought yes, yeah, cinematography was was next to perfect in my opinion. So those are my picks. Uh, what's yours for cinematography? Yeah, same, same, same here, same here. Uh, right, and a uh, lighthouse, yeah. Right, okay. This is a tricky word, by <laughs> Original screenplay. So we have Knives Out, Well Deserved, Barrett Story, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Parasite. So, sorry, okay. I had to go with the Golden Globe winner, Quentin Tarantino, my boy, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I think that he will win Best Original Screenplay. Just mainly because right. it really is the most, feels like the most self-aware <laughs> script he's ever written, in my opinion. Um, and then as far as Runner Up goes, it should come as no surprise. Parasite. Yeah, one of right. the best written films of 2019, in my honest opinion. I, I'm so glad that it made it to that uh, category. So yeah, that's my Runner Up. So what's your pick for Original yeah, Screenplay? Yeah, yeah that's, I, I switch places with you. So number one, Parasite, and then once upon a time in Hollywood. All right, we can live with that. Okay, we do have to, we have to duke it out. Cool. Uh, best adapted screenplay. This is this is a tricky one. Uh, we have the Irishman. We have Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Little Women, props right. to, to Greta Gerwig, and the two popes. So my pick is the Irishman. 
Uh, just being able to t- take this really fascinating story, well, an easy novel, and just yeah. make a damn great, you know, revisionist gangster film, basically. I thought, yeah, these are those points, but um, as far right. as runner up, I will give it to Greta Gerwig for, for Little Women. You know what I mean? Just right. being able to take such a beloved classic and make it kind of give it like a modern viewpoint of it. You know what I mean? And, right. and still make it work. Uh, so, yeah, pro- pro- props to get, uh, Greta. If she wins, great for her. Uh, but I still think the Irish will have a huge chance of winning. Uh, what's right. your pick? Yeah, once again, switch places. Um, Greta Gerwig as for Little Women and then Irish Woman Second. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, best animated short we have Durka or D C E R E. We have Kidbull, we have Memorable, we have Sister, and my pick is so easy Hail Love. Not gonna be right. this. Hail Love is going to win. Hail Love is going to yeah. win. Hail Love is going to win. I said that three times. That means it's going to win. No competition. This one here. I know you, you, we, we, we uh, I know you can, uh, you, you totally agree with me, right? Please see us. Yeah, uh, uh, nothing, nothing against that. Yeah, Hail Love. Yeah. I mean the last minute of that of that short film alone, but if that don't hit you emotionally, but even you have no soul, you have no heart. Um, best animated feature. This is kind of tricky because one film that I wanted to see, but I didn't get around to it. I have a huge, I have a huge feel, I have a feeling that it will win, uh, but I didn't see it. Like I said, so that would be missing link. But I have seen Toy Story four, which is my pick. I did see Klaus, which is my uh, runner up. And we have I Lost My Money and How to Train Your Dragon, The Hidden Will. Those right. are also on the list. But for me, my pick is Toy Story 4. Uh, okay. I just loved how, because I, I felt with every Toy Story, the animation just gets better and better. This is the, the closest to photorealism that we'll get, or at least, it, it, oh yes, well, not so much photorealism, but this lighting that they did with this light alone is so, well, yeah, photorealistic, right? And just how the, the how everything just looks so polished and clean, you know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, my runner up would be Klaus. Uh, this was a show that I actually checked out on Christmas Day. You know, because you, well, you, you loved it so much, so I checked it out. And yeah, it was great, though. Uh, really, really dug it. Uh, and, you know, points for Netflix having two films in this category, along with yeah. uh, I Lost My Body, which I also reviewed. Um, the story was so so, but I mean, as far as like just weird out there animated film, yeah, it, it kind of works, right? So, uh, what's your pick for best animated feature? Yeah, Klaus, Klaus, and then um, I lost my body. Okay, uh, did you see I lost my body? Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, what were you, what were you talking about it? It was, it was, it was fine for you. Or you expected more? No, I liked it. Just uh, I didn't, I don't love it, but I liked it. Uh, but I can't, I didn't really get into Klo- to Toy Story, to, to Toy Story so much as much as the others. I liked right. it, but I don't love it. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah that, that that's fine. That's fine. All right. So we we get into into the big leagues now, right? So best director, you have Martin Scorsese, Irishman. Todd Phillips, Joker, much deserved. Let me be real. Sam Mendes, 1917. Quentin Tarantino, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Boo Jung Ho, Parasite. Now, in a, in, a, in a dream world, I would love it if, say, Tarantino or Bong Jung Ho wins for their films. But my pick is Sam Mendes for 1917. I think he has a huge chance of winning this. My runner up, well, sorry, I had to give it to my boy, Matt Scorsese for The Irishman. So, uh, what's your pick for Best Director? That's all right. Uh, for me, it's uh, Bong Joon Ho and then Sam Mendes. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, uh, but I, I, I personally would be happy if he wins. Uh, if if Bong Joon Ho wins for 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 Parasite, I really would be happy if he wins for that. Uh, best supporting actress, we have Kathy Bates for Richard Jewell. We have Laura Dude for Marriage Story. We have Scarlett Johansson for Jojo Rabbit. We have Florence Pugh for Little Women, but she served. And we have Margot Robbie for Bombshell, also well deserved as well. But my pick is Laura Dean, my story. She came in, she shut shit down, yep. she killed it. I love her uh, performance. I love her character uh, in it as well. As far as runner up goes, uh, I would. Although I have a feeling, although okay, if she doesn't win for the next cat, well the well the subsequent category that I'll get to, I'll be glad if she at least win in this one here. Uh, Scarlett Johansson for Jojo Rabbit. Uh, right. I really, really dug the the character that she played in this, and you know, we just the moments with her and Jojo were, were quite, you know, hot woman. You know what I mean? So yeah, my yeah. pick is Laura Dern, runner up, Scar Johansson. Uh, what about you? Yeah, yeah, same here. Um, same, same thing. Uh, Laura Dern and then Scarlett. 
all right, cool, cool. So we at least we agree on something. Uh, best supported actor. <laughs> we have Tom Hanks, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. Auntie Hopkins, The Two Popes. Al Pacino and Joe Pesci for The Irishman. Brad Pitt, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I had to kind of yeah. cheat here, so my pick is Joe Pesci, The Irishman. But runner up, I have two runner ups. So my first runner up is Al Pacino for The Irishman. I'd be happy, I'd be both happy and disappointed at the same time if he wins over Joe Pesci. But right. I mean, this was the first Scorsese movies ever in, and he just keep he just came in and killed it, right? But yeah. the second runner up would be Brad Pitt, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I thought that what yeah. he brought to that movie was, yes, it was subdued and all that, but I thought that he brought he brought he brought something a little bit different, a little, some little uniqueness to the story as well. And it really dug his performance here, uh, which is not seen a lot. I think that Brad Pitt just kills it with all of his performances in my opinion but yeah if it were up to me though know, as far as like uh runner ups yeah al pacino for irish Red. but my pick is joe pesci uh what about you yeah, yeah me too uh joe pesci first uh al pacino second um yeah okay cool so so no yeah. no second run-ups fine all right uh um, yeah, I mean. uh, yeah all right so lead actress we have cynthia every irivo sorry for harriet we have Scarlett Johansson for Married Story. Uh, Shawsi, keep, don't know how to pronounce that name, sorry. Ronan for Little Woman. Charlie Sterren for Bombshell. And Renny Zellweger for Judy. Now, I'll confess yeah. something, right? A lot of people rooted for Renny Zellweger to win for Judy. Yeah. I admittedly only watched like about 20 minutes of the show and then I just played down. Guy just felt it was just boring as hell. But if it were up to me, my pick for lead actress is McGill Scal Johansson for, for Marriott Story. I thought that she okay. just delivered such an excellent performance in this. And runner up goes to Charlie Sterren for Bombshell. Because, yeah, she was, she was one of the best things about that movie. Her performance was great as well. You know what I mean? Very, 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 very well. Uh, very, well, great casting, I would say, though. But, yeah, I thought that Charlie's, Charlie's really came through with a great performance in that film. But yeah, uh, Scarlet for Marriott Story, that's my pick. Runner up is Charlie's Tehran for Bombshell. Uh, but I have a feeling that, you know, Randy Zellweger will win because, you know, because for the 20 minutes that I did see in the show, and I admit, mean, yes, she did nail the, the whole Judy Garland thing down well. But I just, I don't know, the reason why I just tuned out of it is that it's just that I wasn't really sure where the story was going as far as the, well, what you go. I, I wasn't sure what they were going for, basically. So I just. I don't know, maybe I just need to watch it over, I guess. Maybe watch the full thing, but I don't know. I just read for Scarlet for this one. Uh, what about you? Yeah, I agree with that. Um, that is... Uh, yeah, say back. Say back one, one more of them. All right, it's Har- it's Cynthia Irivo Ir- Ir- for Harriet. We have Scarlett Johansson for Marriage Story. We have Shore Shields, Ronan for Little Woman. I keep fucking up that name, but sorry. Uh, Charlie Sterren for Bombshell. I read Zellweger for Judy. Right, yeah, Renny Tell we are going um, for that. Because the right. whole act, you can't go wrong. Yeah, that, that, that's what's, that's once the thing. You do that, like, guys, yeah, once you do that, that's... Yeah, yeah well, then, uh, then so I see you running for a uh, little woman. Okay, so nothing for for, 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 for Skarjo, right, for, for my story? Nah, nah, nah. No, for, no, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, okay, all right. Fine. Um, okay, so two more to go. We have lead actor. We have Antonio Banderas for Pain and Glory. Leonardo DiCaprio for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I see a lot of people eyeing this man to win, but I don't think he will. Adam Driver for Marriage Story. Joaquin Phoenix for Joker. Jonathan Price for Two Popes. I mean, yeah. this is obvious. Joaquin Phoenix going to win this. He going to win this, right? Yeah. yeah. Let, let me be real. He, he going to win for Joker. He was he, the best thing about the movie. Yeah, yeah. The thing is, he knocking on the door for a hot minute now. So, I don't know. I, yeah. can't, see, I could see him winning. Um, like this, man was putting out, like, this man was putting out work, like, real work in the 2010s. Oh, right? Right. So, like, give him his just due now. Like, come on, right? right. Um, I heard great things about Antonio Banderas' performance in Play, Pain and Glory. Yes. I didn't, but I didn't yeah. see it. I really, really need to. Right. Um, I loved Leonardo DiCaprio with Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, but... Um, and Jonathan Price for two popes as well. Yeah, but as far as run up goes, um, I'd give it to, to Adam Driver, but for my story. Right. Yeah. Good. Along with, with Scarlett, I thought that his performance was was excellent. So right. what, what's your pick for, for lead actor? Yeah, lead, um hmm, yeah, yeah. I think Joaquin go in it. Um and run up, Jonathan Price. I thought he was pretty good. Okay, okay, okay. 
I mean, if, if, I would say it's a ups, I would say it will be an upset if he wins, though. But I'll be glad yeah. for him. I really would be yeah. glad for him. Okay, yeah, he's 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 a veteran, Jen. And has he ever won an Oscar? I don't think so. Has he? I, I can't remember. Anyway, so now we now now for the last for the last award of the night, right? Best picture. Ford v Ferrari, The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Little Women, Marriage Story, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Parasite. I had to take this, I had to really think about it. So in my, in my dream world, I'd be happy if Parasite wins Best Picture. I'd also be happy if Once Upon a Time in Hollywood wins Best Picture. But right now, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is my runner up. I'd also be happy if the Irishman wins as well, but that's my second run-up. But my pick is 1917. I think it has a huge chance yeah. of winning. Uh, just excluding the, the, the gimmick, right? The, the long thing thing. I really do think that it is a powerful piece of, of cinema. Just a very ambitious yeah. piece of cinema. This is something that people will look at and just remember and be inspired by. And that's the kind of thing you want from a best picture. You want, you want to be something that people will remember and you know, other filmmakers and writers will be inspired by, you know what I mean, to do that. Um, but yeah, like I say, my runner-up is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. You know what I mean? Um, my second runner-up is The Irishman because, you know, it was Scorsese just back in, 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 in pure form. Um, but I made this joke last week. Um, the my wild card now, as in, okay, if 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 you know the politics play out the way I expect it to, I really think that the wild, I really think that Joker <laughs> might end up winning Best Picture. It's something that I don't want to accept now, but I, I, I don't know. I I I have a feeling like when, if it does happen, I will be shocked. I'll be like, it, it would be like Green Book shock, but it'll be like, you're actually really giving this a Joker, though, like really. Not to say Joker is a terrible movie or it doesn't deserve to be nominated like that, but I just felt that there were other better films within this category here. But I still have that slight little feeling of gut that they might give this to Joker. So that's why I see that's more wild card at the moment. But for me, 917 is my pick for Best Picture. Runner ups, uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and Irish Run. In a dream world, I'd be happy if Parasite win, but I doubt it. We had our American film to win, you know, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But. Wildcard, like I see, is Joker. Uh, what about you? What's what's your take on who will win Best Picture in this? Uh, uh, yeah, well, for me, I think, um, this year. Yeah, I think I think nineteen seventeen and Parasite run up. All right. Uh, what what about the, the other films at all? Like, um, like, like their, yeah, their, their chances Irishman, basically. Irish one, maybe. Irish one, maybe. Little Woman, maybe. Because Little Woman, the interesting thing with Little Woman. The director didn't get through now, so is it possible that I could get through? Yeah, um, I, I, I'd personally be upset if it wins, though, because, like, okay, right. like, I, I understand, you know, female director, all that kind of stuff, but this show compared to Parasite, that is something. Yeah, compared to Parasite, you know, yeah, that's my thing. You have here, Tuesday, and this one is, yeah, like, you know, be like a minor film in this grand party of great films, though, but not seeing Little Woman is a terrible movie. Not seeing that, but, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, it, it's because she didn't get nominated as director. That's why I think it could get through, maybe. I ain't sure. Um, okay. as I say, yeah. And then Irishman update for me. Um, I really like Ford Bifari. I really want that to win. But well, that ain't going to win. But um, yeah. 1917 and Parasite is my two. All right. And, well, last things last. Um, well, what, 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 what about Joker? What, what if? I keep seeing that. What if the company <laughs> wins Best Picture? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could, it could. I mean, I ain't saying no, it can't. I ain't saying it can't win, but uh, I ain't, I ain't no bother. I mean, maybe. I, ain't. I mean, it there, it there, it dominated. So technically, it's a possibility, but I ain't, I ain't seen it. But whatever. Yeah, but you know, I guess in a week's time we'll see. Though, those were our you know picks and kind of predictions for you know the the awards for the Oscar ceremony. So you know, feel free to let us know what your thoughts are on who you think will win what. <laughs>